Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Carpenter Notepool YAML. So Carpenter is the latest Kubernetes autoscaler which does more than scaling. It does cost optimization, upgrading, a data plane, etc. So you control Carpenter behavior using two YAML file. One is the Notepool, which was formerly known as Provisioner. Other one is Node Class, which is formerly known as AWS Node Template. Node pool is important YAML. In this lecture, we are going to cover that. All right, first things first, it is a YAML file. It defines what kind of nodes Carpenter will create. In Node pool YAML, you define the instance types, CPU architecture, number of cores, certain availability zones for nodes that Carpenter will respect. Important point, you need to create this YAML after installing Carpenter else no nodes will be provisioned. Early versions of Carpenter, it used to ship with a default Notepool YAML file, but that's not the case anymore. And finally, when you think about EC2s, there is the EC2 instance type, the memory, availability zone, etc. But then there's also like the Amazon machine image, the operating system, Linux, Windows, the, what security groups needs to be attached, what subnets it should uh, launch the EC2 in, those are defined by the different YAML, which is node class YAML. Uh, so that's for a different lecture. All right, so the node pool YAML looks like this on the left, and you could tell this is a node pool YAML by the type kind node pool. And this is not your uh, default Kubernetes uh, object types, right? Because this kind will be like pod, deployment, etc. But since this is a custom resource, uh, once you install Carpenter, Carpenter handles this kind node pool. But all the important stuff is happening under spec requirements. So let's take a look. Uh, let's say you deploy a workload and this workload has requested 10 megabytes of memory and 100 milliliter of CPU. So this pod currently does not have any EC2s to run. All the existing EC2s have run out of capacity. So now Carpenter needs to create an EC2. So Carpenter is gonna run some evaluation before provisioning the EC2 and it will look into this node pool file. So first, it will check what instance family it should consider. So in this case, we have C5, M5, R5, T3. So depending on this memory, 10 megabyte and 100 milliliter CPU, T3 micro will suffice. So Carpenter will think, should I create a T3 micro? But then it will also consider the other fields. With node pool YAML, not only you could do in, you can also do not in. So see, I'm saying the instance size must not be in nano, micro, small. Because maybe we know our workload, we know there are a lot of pods that's gonna come in and the nano, micro, small instance type are not going to accommodate all those pods. So you will end up with lot more EC2 instances and we always prefer having a bigger EC2 instance size which can accommodate a lot more pods than numerous small EC2 instance types, okay? So T3 micro is out of the picture. So then Carpenter will go one step forward and say, all right, I will provision a T3 medium. But it has not provisioned it yet, right? Because instance type is just one thing. It also needs to determine which availability zone, architecture, etc. Also, if you are thinking, why should I put this? Like, do I need to put this instance family C5, M5, R5, T3? No. All these fields are optional. You can keep all these fields blank and Carpenter will automatically choose the best instance type. But in real world production projects, that's not how things goes. Uh, because any enterprise will have a compute savings plan or reserved instances, or they know the instance type that the workload should run in uh, based on load testing and whatnot. So most often than not, you will specify the instance type based on the parameters I just mentioned. All right, next, Carpenter needs to determine what availability zone this instance should be provisioned. So here we have given availability zone US West 2A, 2B, and best Carpenter will check which availability zone has more capacity, and then it will determine, all right, US West 2A has more capacity. At the same time, we, you can determine the architecture. So AMD64 is your x86, your traditional uh, Intel chip, 
and then you also have Graviton which is ARM processor ARM64. So this depends on your workload. So x86 is the more popular one. So let's say in this case the workload requires uh, AMD64. So Carpenter will say okay US West 2A AMD64. Next the important part which is capacity type spot or on demand. This is one of the superpower of Carpenter. It will prioritize spot unless there is no spot capacity then it will fall back to on demand. Also Carpenter handles the two minute spot interruption warning which is a pretty great feature. Uh, with cluster autoscaler which is, a, which is another Kubernetes autoscaler you need to handle that two minute warning. You need to install node termination handler etc. With Carpenter when AWS gives you a spot termination warning two minutes Carpenter will automatically create another EC2 instance and it will respect all the other node pool parameters so it can only be C5, M5, R5, T5 not in nano micro spall etc. And it will move the pods from the terminating spot instance to this new instance. Okay all right so at this point let's say everything is satisfied and Carpenter provisions this T3 medium spot instance in US West 2A x86 and this workload gets scheduled in that EC2. More workloads keep coming in right so more workloads keep coming in Carpenter keep provisioning uh, new EC2 instances. At certain point one more workload comes in and it requires a memory 600 megabytes and CPU 700 millicore but Carpenter you can also restrict how many EC2 instances this node pool can provision. So see this limits field it says CPU 100 and memory 1000. So this means this node pool will keep on provisioning EC2 instances till the aggregate of all the CPUs from these EC2s reaches 100 vCPU or 1000 gigabytes of memory. So let's say at this point all the EC2 that Carpenter node pool that this node pool already provisioned reached 100 vCPU. So this pod will stay pending unschedulable because the node pool reached limit no more nodes can be provisioned. Carpenter will put that message in the log file which you can uh, trigger an alert and then take action. And the important thing to remember is this is just this node pool. This does not mean that Carpenter will never provision another instance. So you could have multiple node pools. So see this metadata team A. So this node pool is just for team A. So you are restricting how many EC2s can, or how many worker nodes this team A can provision. You could go and increase this limit and you can have other node pool for team B with different limits and within your pod specification file you can use this metadata or you can use your labels, annotations, tents, tolerations uh, to uh, schedule your pod into appropriate EC2 instances. Now moving forward if you say Raj I know what EC2 instance type I need. So I don't need to go and specify all that stuff. Can I do that? Of course. In the spec requirement file you can do instance type and you can directly put in the actual instance type like m5d.extra-large or c6a.large. If you're running GPU instance type you can put in p5, g5, etc. If you like this video and want to know more about Carpenter, I just released a Carpenter masterclass for Kubernetes in Udemy. Uh, I have given maximum discount coupon. You can buy this course for $9.99 and cheaper in uh, outside of US. Uh, also in the spirit of learning, I have created codes for all my courses. Everything is in description. If you want to support me, purchase one of these courses. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.